in this session i will be discussing bleeding disorders its definition and its classification so let's start bleeding disorders the bleeding disorders are also known as hemorrhagic diastasis right so what is the problem here there is a defective hemostasis with abnormal bleeding so basically the patient will present with spontaneous bleeding either spontaneous bleeding or excessive external or internal bleeding following a trivial trauma so you can see the bleeding can be spontaneous it can be excessive even after trivial trauma it can be external it can be internal it can be in the skin it can be in the mucous membrane it can be in the conjunctiva so that is bleeding disorder it is due to abnormal hemostasis so before understanding the classification of bleeding disorders it's important to understand the steps in the hemostasis then only we can understand the various types of the bleeding disorders now what is hemostasis as the name indicate hemo means bleeding and stasis means stoppage so it is the stoppage of the bleeding after injury just suppose i am having a cut here or injury here what will happen obviously i will bleed so anyone any normal human being whenever injured will bleed from that particular organ particular area so what will happen next after i will bleed for next few seconds or few minutes and then bleeding can be stopped automatically so in all of us the bleeding stopped automatically because of a physiological phenomenon which is acting in human body it's known as hemostasis so hemostasis is a physiological phenomenon it's not a disease it is physiological it is normal so in this phenomenon bleeding is stopped automatically after injury so whenever we have injury any part of the body the bleeding is stopped automatically after few seconds or minute right thus protecting the integrity of the vascular system after injury so you can see here in this diagram you can see this is a blood vessel this is the wall of the blood vessel here there is injury this is the site of the injury so as soon as the person have injury the person start bleeding the person start bleeding after the next few seconds or minutes a plug is formed here this plug is hemostatic plug and that is causing the stoppage of the bleeding till the healing takes place here the plug will be remaining there only once the healing takes place after that this plug will will be dissolved it will be resolution will be taking place so that is hemostasis so let me tell you the steps of the hemostasis so in the hemostasis basically there are four steps let me tell you the four steps of the hemostasis the first step is arteriolar vasoconstriction the second step is the primary hemostasis the third step is the secondary hemostasis and the next is clot stabilization and resorption you got my point so the first step is the arteriolar vasoconstriction can you see here in this diagram you can see the blood vessel you can see the blood vessel is lined by endothelial cells appreciate the continuity of the endothelial cells everywhere so the here the endothelial cell now here the endothelial cell is discontinuous so basically this is the site of the injury you all can notice what is the site of the injury as soon as the person have injury that particular fragment undergo vasoconstriction so i guess you all can see this portion is showing vasoconstriction vasoconstriction so that the less blood will be coming in this area so less chances of bleeding that this this is very immediate effect and transient for the next few seconds only vasoconstriction is there after that it is not there right so bleeding will resume if the primary and secondary clot will not form so that is the first step the second step is the primary clot formation now you all can notice this is the site of the injury at this site of the injury how primary clot is formed primary clot is formed by platelet in the lumen of the blood we have all type of cells we have rbcs wbcs platelet currently we are interested in platelet so the platelet will come can you see these platelets and they will bind they will form bond with the sub endothelial tissue sub endothelial tissue is the tissue just below the endothelium endothelium in this area is, is disrupted so the sub endothelial tissue i'm marking this with blue color the sub endothelial tissue is exposed so whenever the platelets were present in the lumen of the blood they were crossing from here whenever they found that the sub endothelial tissue is exposed usually sub endothelial tissue is not exposed but now it is exposed so these platelets will come and they will form a bond here and they the first row of the platelet is formed this step is known as platelet adhesion this step is known as adhesion i am writing here adhesion right so adhesion is formation of bond of the platelet with the sub endothelial tissue you got my point after that few of the platelets they will secrete granules outside can you see the granules to call other platelets for help this step is known as activation so platelets got activated the first row then multiple platelets will come after this step multiple more platelets will come and they will form multiple story platelet over platelet so these platelets are forming bond with the other 